Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item is an ordinance to rezone property at number one Eagle Wing Drive. It presently is zoned A1. The requested zoning is an R1, and we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's ordinance 02380, but I imagine we probably want to hear from people first. Good evening, Council. The request before you this evening is a rezone from A1 to R1 for single family development. Our comprehensive plan defines this area as single family, which does establish a use pattern. Single family homes exist to the north and to the west. Planning staff recommended approval of this rezoning to the Planning Commission on September 18, 2023, and the vote to rezone failed. September 20th, 2023, Mr. French, on behalf of Grant Good, submitted a request to appeal the denial decision of the Planning Commission to the City Council for your consideration this evening. Senior Planner Ryan Robeson is present this evening, and I'll be glad to defer all questions that you have concerning this matter to him. Ryan, do you have anything to add before we... Mr. Good, you are... Okay. Hey, Bobby. Bobby, if you would, state your name. And Bobby French. Uh, my address is 1021 Front Street, uh, Central Arkansas Professional Survey. I've uh, been working with Mr. Good on this project for a while. We've, uh, you know, I've heard everybody's concerns and stuff. Um, they have, you know, they know utilities. They have to pay for the utilities. I know they're very, very well aware that they have to get sewer to the property and water. Uh, met with Conway Corp got the easements to get the sewer to the property. Uh, I went to the planning commission, talked to the planners and stuff. You know, they, you know, basically, I know people have said something about a PUD. Basically, staff told us, you know, you don't qualify for a PUD. You know, if you want to develop single family, you need R1 zoning. So, you know, met the comprehensive plan. You know, so R1 seemed like a pretty simple thing. I've never, you know, I've been in business 25 years and, I guess I've never seen an issue with R1. Uh, I know that there's been some people saying, you know, that they're wanting to put, you know, 6,000 square foot lots and all that. That's not his plan. Uh, he's, his plan at the time is to do quarter to half acre lots with maybe, like maybe put some Hendrick style lots for seniors in the middle somewhere along the way. Uh, but, you know, to do all this has to be R1. And I know a lot of the people that are here uh, live in R1, right out in that area. They have R1 zoning right to the west of them. I mean, so he's not asking for what it's not out there already. Uh, you know, if you go back, you look, think back 30 years ago, West Conway looked a lot like that area there. You know, uh, it, the roads were not great, you know, but as it developed, you know, you got impact fees that pay for roads. That's why they were passed. Uh, you know, and as the houses get built, the roads get better. You know, the infrastructure, the sewer, there wasn't sewer when we started developing out West Conway, there was no sewer. You know, developer brought the sewer, developer brought the water. Uh, you know, I know, you know, people have concerns and, and I don't blame them. I would have concerns if I lived out there also, but I mean, the R1 consistent with the plan and is it right for that area? I believe it is, you know, and I, I believe that, you know, your plan, your staff, everything states that it is appropriate. Everything that the city has put out says that R1 is appropriate in this area. Uh, I mean, so that's kind of how we got to where we're at. Uh, you know, we'd like for it to be R1, and I think, I don't think that's a crazy ask. Really don't. Uh, you know, they want to develop a nice piece of property. It's a nice, it's a pretty piece of property. They like to develop it, and, you know, and it's not going to be a pasture forever. You know, I mean, everywhere out west at one time was a pasture, you know, and everybody probably thought, well, that's always going to be a bean field or that's always going to have cows on it. It's always, well, I mean, we're a growing city, and, you know, if we're going to keep growing, it's going to take our one property to do it, you know, and, it, you know, maybe if R1's an issue, I mean, maybe the city should look at, a different residential zoning, you know, if, you know, if you don't want 6,000 square feet, y'all just change it to where they could do five, you know, y'all just change the zone subdivision ordinance where they could do smaller lots. I mean, and maybe y'all need to undo that or redo a new zoning R1A or something, but I mean, I feel, and I think our client 
feels that R1 is appropriate zone for that area. And we appreciate, you know, y'all's vote on that. We appreciate y'all's time. If y'all got any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Any questions for Mr. French, Council? I have, I have one question. Um, and you may not know the answer to this, but I saw a Facebook post from, I believe it was Grant's sister, who said back in January, who said it was the property was sold to a big developer. Is that true? The property, they still own the property. The property's not been sold. They still own it. It's, you know, his sister so, has nothing to do with the property. So I mean, that's, she was incorrect? She, she doesn't have anything to do with the property. I mean, you, Grant, get up here in a minute, you might be able to tell you a little bit better than that, but they still own the property. The trust still owns the property. Ms. Good's trust owns the property. No Thank other developer owns it. I don't think there's been any agreement with any other developer to, to sell it. You know, I think, you know, there's a lot of rumors going around, Roush Coleman this, Roush Coleman well, that. Well, but, and I but mean, that's, that's what started it. But yeah, that's what but, <laughs> was Leslie saying. Yeah, but I don't think that's, that's that has not been done. I mean, you can look on you can look on the records pretty easily on on the website, GIS website and see who owns the property. And it's still their trust to own. There's been no agreement to sell it to anybody this time. Any other questions for Mr. French? Thank you, Bobby. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Okay. Thank you for working with us on this. I'm Elaine Good, and I live on the property at One Eagle Wing and have lived there since the mid-70s. Uh, we bought it and uh, built a house, and I've lived there, and I hope I live there till I leave this world. But uh, it has, we have 80 acres, and uh, we wanted to develop it so that, uh, I wanted to develop it before I passed away. And um, it will be developed in larger lots, and it won't be a Rosh Coleman. There's not not any plan at all for that. And uh, I, uh, I've enjoyed living there, but we had cattle, and I grew up on a farm west of Greenbrier. <coughs> but I'm not able now with stage four cancer and 83 years of age, I'm not able to do what I used to do, so I'm uh, ready to make some changes on it, but I still plan to live there till I die. Y'all have any questions? Any questions for Miss Good? It's good to see you, Miss Elaine. <laughs> it's good to see I you have too. So much respect for you as a businesswoman, well, woman, you. and mentor, and a friend. Thank so. you, thank you very much, Cindy. Okay. Thank you for your service. In yeah, the thank y'all for yours. Yes. This is a Good service, y'all. Anyone else like to speak in favor? I'm Grant Good. I live at 3340 Nicholas Drive in Conway, and I'm in favor of it being rezoned from A1 to R1. Um, we've been through about a two-year process of looking at the options of getting sewer to that property and met with Conway Corp numerous times and worked out the details of that, obtained an easement to get sewer and put a lift station uh, in that property. There has been no formal, uh, whatever you want to call it, arrangements for anything other than what we're presenting tonight. Um, there's been no, uh, no offer and acceptance. We own the property. My mother owns the, the trust actually owns the property. And we're wanting to develop it just like I'm, you've seen the letter that I sent that, um, you know, we're looking at something like quarter to half acre lots, something like West Conway and a mixture of uh, probably some PUDs in that, on that 80 acres that would include something like Hendricks Village or maybe like the Cove, something like those, those deals. It would also include keeping probably at least three of the ponds that are there and work those into trails uh, with the sidewalks work that into the development. So do you have any questions for me? Any questions for Mr. Good, Council? Will you be developing, Mr. Good? Will you be the developer? I will be the developer, and we plan right now 
to be the builder as well. Builder I'm a residential contractor, so we plan to, it would be a very slow moving development. You know, I know everybody's worried about the roads. Conway Corp says it'd be a year and a half or two years to get their stuff together for the way things are backlogged right now to get the sewer stuff and the electrical stuff needed to develop it. After that, we would be looking at a pretty slow moving, maybe five acre phases at the size homes that we're talking about building. That would be a very slow moving. I, I wouldn't expect traffic to be impacted for at least five years. Um, so that would be the plan. So Conway Corp is going to develop the sewer out there for you? Conway Corp is developing the sewer out there for you? Conway Corp engineered the sewer. We would be paying for the, the sewer. I mean, Conway Corp does the, either, either my engineer or Conway Corp does the engineering to get the sewer to the city sewer, and then we have to pay for all of it. We either have to pay Conway Corp for engineering or a private, or a private engineer. The only reason I asked, you just said that Conway Corp, we met with them and they were going to do it, and I was just trying to get clarification on um, Okay, I have hearing aids, so if you speak into that sure. mic. Sure, you just <laughs> said that Conway Corp, we met with them and they were going to do it. I was trying to get I'm, clarification. I met with Conway Corp about the feasibility. So I've met with Conway Corp numerous times about the feasibility of getting sewer to the property, also the feasibility of, of water, the water that would be needed, and uh, the electrical. And of course, every other uh, cable or whatever else that Conway Corp offers. That's fine. I'm just trying to get clarification of what right. you said and what's happening. That's all. Well, that's part of the process in Conway because the utilities, Conway Corp's the one that handles all the utilities. I understand that. So, so Justin McGee is my engineer. I'm sure Justin appreciates me mentioning him. <laughs> He's gotten several calls about it as well, but uh, Justin would probably be the engineer that would doing the engineering on it. Like I say, my, my family's paid property taxes on this property for 50 years, almost 50 years. It's been, it's been inside the city, it was annexed inside the city, 75, 76, 77, something like that. So it's been there a long, long time. And uh, we'd like to have the opportunity to uh, progressively do something with it. That doesn't mean that anything's going to happen really fast. In fact, we were we were surprised, um, and I know the rumors have flown around about Roush Coleman. Um, we had, nobody called me before the planning commission meeting before. Um, when I came, when I was walking my mother in for the planning commission meeting, I said, "Well, it looks like there's a lot of people here," and she mentioned, "Well, Leslie, my sister, said that they had a big meeting of neighbors uh, opposing it." I said, really. So when we came to the planning commission meeting, we had no idea there was any even opposition to rezoning it. So, anyway, any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Okay, we're going to change gears. If those who'd like to oppose, if the first speaker, you have ten minutes. Uh, anyone after that, uh, if you've got something new to add, you have two minutes. I know your name and your address, but go ahead and say it anyway. <laughs> My name is Floyd Ballantyne. I live at 2920 Lakeview Road. That's the corner of Lakeview Road and Cadron Gap. Been there for 34 years. First of all, let me thank you for giving us a chance to speak to you tonight regarding the proposed rezone of the 80 acres known as Eagle Wing on Lakeview Road, owned by Miss Good. I've lived four houses down from this property for 34 years. It's a wonderful neighborhood to live and raise your children. My sons could ride around Williamsburg or Quail Creek and enjoy their friends. Couples can walk out here, but not on Lakeview Road. Lakeview Road is much too dangerous. <clears throat> all this is possible because of the large existing lots that all of us invested in when we bought or built our houses. Uh, we did this for privacy. We did this for the wildlife and everything else. We all bought our lots and homes because of the freedom provided by the large spaces. We paid extra to be able to enjoy the area. Our lots range in size from a half acre to three to five acres and even more. It's a predominantly rural area. Even though we're five minutes from Walmart, we still kind of live in the country. <clears throat> That's what we wanted. That's what we want to stay. 
An attempt to rezone to R1 is in an effort to build, and I apologize, Grant, because we have been told 300 or more houses on this 80 acres. Uh, the surrounding area is zoned A1, or it's unincorporated to the north. This, there is no R1 zone touching this property. The closest R1 zone is Williamsburg. Uh, this area from old Highway 25 to Highway 65 on the east, that encompasses Quail Creek, Falcon Crest, Williamsburg, or Lake View Acres, covers approximately 800 acres, 10 times the size of Eagle Wing. That area has 325 homes on it now, and they want to build that many, possibly, on 80 acres, one-tenth of the size. It's just not feasible for the area. The existing infrastructure will not handle it. We are not concerned with Ms. Good selling and developing her property. We are concerned with numbers. The density of this development does not fit the surrounding area. We are just asking for appropriate land use. We have been told that a development of this size would bring in an extra 4,000 car trips a day to the area. That's a whole lot of people on a road that can't handle it. There are two roads out of the area, Lakeview Road and Cadron Gap Road. One that leads out to Old Highway 25 that the state of Arkansas just moved a mile and a half to the west because they felt that the increased traffic coming in from Conway from the Wooster area was too dangerous. So now we want to go back and put that many or more cars in the same area. The existing road in front of my house, Lakeview Acres, is 19 feet wide. If you meet a truck with a work trailer or a sanitation department truck, you either drop off the side of the asphalt or you hold your breath until it passes. <clears throat> Mr. Goods has said that he's never seen a wreck on that road. I beg to disagree. Ten days ago, a semi-truck took out three light poles in the area, and the whole area was without power for seven hours. You can check that with energy. <clears throat> the existing water lines are inadequate to carry more than it presently does. Beaver Fork lines are too small, and I believe they are six to eight inch plastic lines. And these people, some of them that live out there, will tell you that they don't have any water pressure. And you put that many more houses, it's even going to be worse. <clears throat> I believe our honorable mayor, who was the chief of the fire department for many years, knows that the fire truck pumps are too strong for those type pipes. As a 35-year employee of Conway Corporation, I've seen it too many times. You have storm drainage to this area. The area that they're wanting to rezone is the lowest point in the area and does not drain good. You add new roads, driveways, sidewalks, etc. That will make that much worse for runoff and the flooding to the surrounding areas. That brings us to sewage. As I said, a 35-year employee of the Conway Corp, I know that a lift station could be installed at great expense to the Goode family. Conway Corporation would have to maintain it for the foreseeable future. Even if Goods put it in, they wouldn't be maintaining it 25 years from now. I've been told that they would pump it to the area around Marketplace Restaurant. Those lines <coughs> do break down. I've worked on them before, and it's not pretty. To do this, you would have to cross several properties, and that's going to be a huge problem. I've been told by Grant that he has secured an easement for Mr. Day. I have not seen any survey stakes or lines in the area, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's something he's talked about, but I'm not sure that it's been secured. It uh, is a potential ecological nightmare. We pump North Hills out and up and into Cadron Creek. That's a secondary water supply. I don't think that's a good way to do that one. It, it's done and we can't change that. <clears throat> don't want an accidental spill and flow into the Beaver Fork, which it could. That is a secondary water supply also for the city of Conway. 
The geese close the lake down enough as it is. We don't need to help them any. In case of a fire, I would put Conway's fire department up against anyone's. They're as good as they come. But they might have trouble, not only with the water supply, but the narrow roads is a traffic issue and a safety hazard. As an employee of Conway Corp, I've seen a lot of changes in Conway, some great, some not so great. The building of this high density addition is not the best use of this land. They are very unique circumstances with this rezoning, as the area of that will be greatly affected are both city and county. As a 10 year member of the Conway School Board, I know from experience the headaches that this will cause Conway Public Schools. With this density of homes, it will increase the attendance to Theodore Jones Elementary School by 300 kids maybe. <clears throat> and they can't handle that right now. It will require a rezone of the entire school systems to get it back where it needs to be. And I can tell you from experience, it's not something you want to get into again. Your own codes state residential districts shall not should, shall promote <clears throat> desirable land use and development in order to protect district character and to conceive land and to conserve, excuse me, land and building values, end quote. The density of this development will not protect the appropriate land use. <clears throat> Destroying the district's character is what this would do. The area would not go along with the surrounding district. The expense to the city, not the developer, to rebuild roads and sidewalks would be in probably millions to try to build on Cadron Gap Ridge, which is solid rock. I watched Conway Corporation put a new light pole in last week. It took them two light poles. Oh, two minutes, thank you. Uh, it took them four days to do that. Cadron Gap is 15 feet wide, goes to the south of my house, and it goes out to Skyline Drive. It's nearly impossible to get out any time of the day on Skyline. It's too dangerous. The state of the city would have to, <clears throat> to install a signal at that intersection. Would you like to try to slow down the racetrack coming in from Greenbrier in the morning? Uh, the best use of this property, A1, is the best use for this property. All the area in the city of Conway did remain. All we ask is this remain A1. The city planning commission turned it down and we respectfully ask the same from the council. If you allow the rezone, you would not have any accountability with the goods or the next potential buyer of that land. Once it's zoned R1, you can't put the back in the box. I'm asking you to please maintain our area as A1. Thank you very much for your time. Let me know if I can answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ballantyne. Any questions for Mr. Ballantyne? Thanks, Again, Floyd. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak in opposition? You'll have two minutes. Marty Montgomery, don't you stand up. I know you can't <laughs> talk just two minutes. <laughs> A uh, good deal of what I was going to say has yes. already been said. Name and, uh, my uh, name is Jesse Thompson, <laughs> and you, Jesse. Uh, I'm an attorney here in town. I've been, I live in uh, Williamsburg and have for, I guess, 16 years. Uh, this area is unique out there. As you know, the, the two ridges that go out there have always differentiated that area from the rest of Conway. The rest of Conway is kind of a, a, a saucer surrounded by hills. And that's always been that way. And this area is a little different than that. And that's the reason that it's developed the way it has, because of that unique topography. And zoning ordinance is supposed to take account for unique topography, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, always the preambles, all the zoning ordinance I've dealt with. I've been city attorney for Conway, uh, I, Damascus, and a couple other cities around here for many years, years ago. Back when the city attorney's office didn't have a building, a secretary, and assistants, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but having said that, the zoning ordinances always have some language in the purpose clauses about protecting property values and 
harmonizing the uses with the rest of the uses in the city. And this will certainly not harmonize with anything I've seen out there. And I, I just don't think, and, and I have to echo what Floyd said, it's just not in harmony with the, the development that's been going on out there for however long the city's existed out there. And I don't think it, it can be brought into harmony with that. If you make it that dense, those problems are going to exist. And there's been talk about people getting sued one way or the other on this thing, whatever decision you all make. And, you know, of course, city can be sued from any side, as you all know. But having said that, uh, the case law talks about arbitrary and capricious decisions made. Well, if you decide, if you, if you look at the arbitrary and capricious nature of things, the actual, if you say that, uh, if you rezone and devalue the 800 acres to, uh, or you don't, re and keep the value of the 800 acres or rezone to benefit the few. And that's essentially what this would be. And I think that's more arbitrary than the other position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Any questions for Mr. Thompson? <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Anyone else like to speak against? Come on up, Woodrow. And we all know who you are, but you're still going to have to tell us. <laughs> Thank you. My name's Woodrow Cummins, 1305 Quail Creek. I, I wanted to remind the council of something that perhaps Andy will be the only one that will remember, that once upon a time we got into a quagmire of R2 zoning, and it was not sufficient to allow a good decision to be made. Uh, at that time, we created another zone, R2 R2 and R2A. Situation like this is that could solve everyone's concerns here is that perhaps you have, and I'm just pulling this out of the air, an R1 as it presently exists, an R1A for large lot subdivisions, and an R1B for high density subdivisions. Y'all don't have that opportunity now to make those kinds of fair and equitable judgments for the citizenry or the petitioners. So I would consider offhand, that seems like a reasonable way to go back and look at it and then let the, the, the situation be reconsidered when you have more options that are more equitable to everybody concerned. Are there any questions? That's one thing that a new planning director will probably be looking at, Mr. Cummins. So we're, I, we're without right now, but we're doing a pretty good job running it anyway with the program. Well, it's so, certainly something that I think warrants further no, study. No, I think that's fair. Thank any you. questions for Mr. Cummins? <laughs> Anyone else like to speak against? Yes, ma'am. I'm Patty Stovall. I live at 47 Lakeview Drive. I had to change my speech a little bit here because um, so many things have been mentioned and we're trying not to, as Bart asked, not to repeat ourselves. So what I would like to talk about is the chronology of how all of this happened from the perspective of those of us that live in Lakeview Acres. So on January 19th, Leslie Good wrote, and she is a trustee on the property, she wrote a Facebook message on our group that, um, stated, and I believe, have you all seen that? Stated that the property was being sold. She did not say has been sold. It said was being sold to a large developer. The developers would be starting on the side field and the family attorney and firm with the developers would answer any questions our group might, may have. So at that point, our assumption was this was a Roush Coleman subdivision because the goods have already sold property to a Roush Coleman subdivision that is um, on Rooster Road in 286. So uh, could all of this been handled better from the beginning? Yeah, probably so. But you know how things go and hindsight's always 2020. Um, so on September 18th, the Planning Commission denied the request for going from A1 to R1. Um, after the Ward 2 meeting with Shelley and Ann, we met with 
Grant and Elaine and had a nice meeting. We asked Grant to outline what he was thinking for the sub, what he was wanting to do with that property. Um, so one thing that really stood out to me from that is in our meeting, Grant said he would need one or two dominoes to fall in his direction in order to afford being able to develop this. And so the question was asked, well, what if one of those one or two develop those one or two dominoes don't fall? We didn't really get an answer to that. And I think that is what really made us as a group, the eight of us that were there, uncomfortable with saying, yeah, we believe everything that's in this letter. And so we're going to move on and say, okay, we're going to back you. We just couldn't. We don't feel comfortable with that. As Floyd said, once this barn doors open, we cannot close it. Um, I wanted to read real quick in the section 305.1 of the current City of Conway zoning code states that specific goals of residential districts include provision of adequate space at appropriate locations necessary to meet housing needs of pressure, present and future inhabitants of the city. Consideration shall also be given to site selection and variety of choice. Congestion shall be prevented in residential districts as much as possible by regulating population density, activity intensity, and extents of, extent of bulk building in relation to area land use. Structure height shall be controlled in residential districts in order to provide light and air access through windows and privacy. Residential districts shall, not should, shall promote desirable land use and development in order to protect the district character and to conserve land and building value. Speaking on behalf of our neighborhood association, we respectfully request that you uphold the Planning Commission's decision and deny this R1 request. Thank you. Any, any, any questions for Ms. Stobal? Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in opposition? You got something new to give us? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Hello, I'm Beth Santis. My husband and I, Ron, we live at 600 Grandview Heights Drive. Um, listening to everybody tonight, I came to this realization. Mr. French said that he had obtained an easement from the city, but Mr. Day said he had gotten, or he, that Mr. Good said he'd gotten property from Mr. Day, all for the sewer, which is my main concern because you'll be blasting through our part of, of Grandview in order to put in sewer lines. Every time I try to get or pin somebody down as to where the sewer lines and utility lines are, I get a different answer. And I find it very hard for you guys to make a decision for us over yes or no for residential when you guys haven't been provided enough information. We haven't been provided enough information. If you can say, yes, here's, the, here's an easement, we've got an easement. Well, how did he get an easement? Because Robbins Lake is, is owned by 24 people that surround it. How did, how did that easement get appropriated? Did they buy it? Well, who bought it? These are the types of questions I keep coming up with every time somebody speaks about this. Where are the utilities going for this development? Because you can't put in 20 houses or 200 houses on land that won't perk without sewer. And that's the question nobody answers. And I'd like to have this denied until well, for me forever, but until somebody says, okay, here, here's the deal, you know, here's where we actually want to put sewer, here's where we've, we've taken in property for an easement. Because right now, I personally think it must be along um, the east side of the city limits, but Mr. Good just said it's on the day property. That's outside of the city limits. There's just way too much misinformation for anybody to make a call on this property until and if we know what's actually going on. Thank you. Any questions, Council? Anyone else? I told you if you came up here, you're gonna have to sing a song for everybody. <laughs> I was best I was best man in Marty's wedding a thousand years ago. But for some reason Arlene's still with him. 
He was a man in my wedding. He wasn't the best man, <laughs> but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Marty Montgomery. I live at number one Lakeview Drive. Uh, and it, it's hard to add it to what has already been said. Uh, with one exception, I'm the oldest living resident in Lakeview Acres. Myself or my family have lived at one, uh, number one or number two Lakeview Drive for 60 years this month. We were the first home built in Lakeview Acres uh, by, uh, I mean, purchased it from Amos Palmer, Avis and Charlene Palmer. That was known as the as a Palmer, a Palmer Farm for years and years. And uh, personally, I do not want to see it change to residential. Now, is that going to happen in the future? Yes. But there is no emergency. There's nothing that, that is forcing this to be done right now. Uh, I don't see why uh, we have to try to gather all this information and make this happen so quick. There's not an emergency that I'm aware of. No one's expressed uh, uh, an emergency of some sort or why it is so urgent that this be rezoned right now. Uh, unless somebody's got some money, they just want to spend because this is going to be a very expensive endeavor to carry out no matter what contractor or who's doing it. Uh, in 2003, I was uh, I have a master's degree in community and e economic development, and uh, uh, from UCA, and myself and three other classmates did this very study that these folks, for the most part, have already put together and presented to you. 20 years ago, we found uh, that it was not suitable for development for the same reasons. Uh, it was the lowest point, uh, and there's no reason to re reiterate all of that. Uh, the the land would not perk. Uh, there were a lot of conditions. The roads at that point were even worse than they are now. And so 20 years ago, we found the exact same opposition or reasonings uh, for it not to be developed. My, one of my major concerns also is uh, we've heard a lot of, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we're planning this and we may. And, and I think I, I told some of our uh, friends here uh, and neighbors. It would be easier to build a new uh, Disney World. So there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, I don't want to see any more tax dollars spent on something that is not absolutely necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I had to, to add. And I, I appreciate you allowing us all to be here and, and present this information. Thank you, Marty. Any questions Marty. for Mr. Montgomery? Are you going to sing? <laughs> That that was a fallacy that was spoken of earlier. I, I, I'm not a singer. I, I've heard it. It's not worth it. It's not pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay, unless there's anyone else, I'm going to bring it back to the council. Thank you all for your patience tonight and your professionalism and your expressing your opinions i do appreciate that council it's back to you mayor the only thing that i want to say is i've had a several email i mean uh, texts from people that are asking for everybody to speak into their microphone there's a lot of people at home watching this okay thank you you're right I got one thing to say. To you. And this supposed to be the beginning <laughs> <Dolly, thank you. laughs> what did you just say is this supposed to be an appeal Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. This is an appeal of the uh, Planning Commission's recommendation. I liked, was it Mr. Cummings that, who is it that had Good. the idea uh, of already for, okay. Um, yes, but someone mentioned if we could come up with different zoning or one A or one B with a little, instead of going from A1 to R1. That's something that would have to happen in the future, naturally. But um, the idea of that is a good, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't know, Andy, back then what was going on, but. It, that makes some sense to me. Yeah, it's a, it's a good good idea. And we get a new planning director. That's one of the things we'll task them with. Is look at that, and as as well as some of our uh, 
our building codes and things that we require in Conway. So, Beth, it was a good idea, Woody. Woody is, he, he, brought, a very, he, he brought a very wise idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, does it play on what's going on tonight uh -huh. is the question. Nope. Sorry, I'm, but I'm I did sure, want to comment. I'm not sure that it does, but I, I, I do believe, Mr. Cummins, that you had a very good idea yes. and something that we need to address. Speak, well, sir. Just like it was several years ago when we ran into the R2 and R2A, right now, you don't have the options. It's either yes or no, and you don't have the options that are necessary for a lot of the requirements that are in that uh, ordinance. Uh, responsible, continuous, equitable, things like that. You also have some things uh, right now to where none of the potential expenses have been um, submitted. For example, we've talked about potential for sewer, potential for this. Uh, the road, I think, is three quarters of a mile. I have not heard any cost estimates of what what that road is going to cost, and I'm sure it's rather significant, and I haven't heard of uh, who's going to pay it. Will it be the city or the, the well, I didn't, I think that's your answer. I, I felt like I knew the answer, but it has not been stated how that infrastructure is going to be paid for. So that's a good question, and, it, and an agreement that needs to be uh, somewhat stated and down. Uh, the reason Quail Creek and Williamsburg are on septic systems, I've had a septic system for 34 years, it's worked very fine, but it's a very large lot. The reason we couldn't do it because it costs significant uh, amounts of money to get a lift station over the ridge. Therefore, we sacrifice density and use larger lots, put in Health Department approved septic systems, and it has met the standards for 30, 40 years. Uh, so there's a big extreme from over here where you have R1 now, as it's presently stated, to the potential over here. And right now, if wrong decisions are made, it could be very expensive on the city down the road. Uh, and so I'm just saying we've run into this before. I can't remember all the details, but I know you were on the council and I was on the council when that happened. And uh, it's a very necessary thing for that whole valley as it goes down there. So I wish I had a better answer than that, but that seems to be the most responsible to all parties, both the people that are applying and the people that are approving. Uh, that's that's the most uh, common sense approach that I could think of. There was actually a good article in the uh, Democrat Gazette Sunday. The city of Fayetteville has not looked at their building standards since 1970. Does that sound right, Mr. Grimes? I think yes. 1970. And we took a look at ours, and we're not far behind. So when when we do bring someone on board, yep. they're going to be tasked that's, with bringing us up to speed. It's it's common. They even have a term that uses for cluster housing R1 or different names, uh, it's, we're not the first town or community to run into this. Uh, we just need to be one of the first communities that addresses this challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Woody. Thank, Thank you. you, Woody. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Grimes. I know you took this back to the council, but given that we've had some more input, um, could we open it back up if the applicant or Mr. French would like to say something after to respond to anything that was said earlier, would that be okay? It's up to the council. I think that's all I'm right. Fine. Okay, I'm Mr. Fine. Good, would you or Bobby French like, like to make any, any further comments? No, I, mean, I don't want to take any more y'all's time. Y'all have already had it. Uh, I would like to say, you know, they consistently hear property values. You know, and I, that's the, I've been in so many of these meetings, everybody talked about property values. Um, I mean, you go out to Cent Centennial Valley, Probably the most expensive houses in Conway, and within a half a mile, there's an apartment. 
within a quarter of a mile, there's a 1,200 square foot house. I don't think this development is going to affect property values. It's going to be a development like everywhere else in Conway. Property develops. It doesn't, I mean, the city has the code. I mean, it's going to meet all the city ordinance. The drainage is going to be there. I mean, we're not, they're not going to allow Plant Street and planning is not going to allow us to go out there and just build some halfway street and drainage. There's going to be detention. All that stuff's going to be there. Uh, that's all I really want to say. Thank you, Mr. French. You. Okay, Council, back to you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to follow up, I think, on what Mr. Jones was kind of alluding to. And so, Charles, we are not voting to approve the ordinance. We're voting to either do a thumbs up or thumbs down on the on appeal. The Right. Correct. Correct. So there's been an appeal. The city council has two options. Um, as I see it, they can uphold the decision of the planning commission denying the application with the reason cited regarding the potential development too great for the area, or the city council could overturn the decision of the planning commission approving the application as amended. So as we typically do, we usually make a motion in an affirmative. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we would affirm the denial. Is that make correct? A motion that's, to. That's what we did the last time. Yeah. Keep, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make sure everybody understands yeah, right. what we're getting mm -hmm. ready to do. So we know what, what we're about. How, on. how we're going to mm -hmm. do this. Yeah, I, I actually don't like that way, but it would be consistent. <laughs> no, no, that's why I'm asking. No, it would be consistent with how the council has handled prior appeals. Okay. So that the folks that are in the audience and also at TV explain what a no vote or yes vote means in this situation well, we haven't even made a motion. we, we, we got to make a motion yeah. it depends motion on how the motion's made yeah. right yes that's yeah, that's okay. that's what Shelley was that's what I was trying all right to. so all right we got that ironed out so yeah. at this point I will take a motion well are we done talking about it well I, I think that. that's why the the planning all the at several of the planning commissioners said that they felt like they were boxed in that they did it's either all or nothing and so what Mr. Cummins said, I, I think, is how we need to move forward. Of course, that doesn't affect Helps nine votes, right. but that, I think that's how they felt. They just felt boxed in. <clears throat> Mr. Good, could I ask a couple of questions of you? Do you mind? Is that okay with you? Sure. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. um, What I heard you say is that you're going to do these in five-acre increments. You're not going to come in and do an 80-acre piece at one time. Well, there's, I mean, if you look at, um, for instance, West Conway, and I live close to Winter Park over there, and I've watched Powell develop Winter Park, and that was when the market was rocking. He started off with 10, and he needed another 10. But that's when the market was really moving. So I don't anticipate with those size houses that the market's going to move that fast and um, so i have checked off the boxes uh, some of the other things that was mentioned uh, the the easement conway corp owns that easement now. it goes all the way to highway 65. it goes from the back of the the day farm i mean the back of our property there's a 20-foot easement that that uh, crosses the road there and then goes over the hill and then comes out at highway 65. and it'll require a bore across under 65 and then the connect over behind the old walmart is where the main comes out that hooks in from lower ridge road um so if, if, the, if, have you been given any estimate of pricing on this yeah i've got some numbers on it and i and, and like i mentioned to them i i'm not prepared to start on this tomorrow but you know the development process is not is a slow moving it's like a turtle. I mean, so if I was going to engineer, you know, Justin says uh, six months for us to get a plat and to engineer this and to put it back to uh, the planning commission and just look at a plat. Then we would be looking at the, if we're going to do some PUD areas, it's going to take some time to adjust for that. And uh, so I'm not anticipating it, it being a fast moving project. But you, but you have to, you know, and what um, Woodrow mentioned is that we're at the mercy. We're applying from A1 to R1. Mm -hmm. It's in A1 right now. And what are our options in A1? Well, we could look at chicken houses. I mean, if you're wanting to, if you're wanting to look at 
agricultural development, uh, but it's not really, uh, everything around it is R1. And uh, Lakeview Acres is R1. And Williamsburg is R1. And everything else on the, up along the ridge uh, to the north is R1, I mean to the south. Oh. And what I've said in the letter is assuring everybody that we're not looking at a Roush Coleman subdivision. We're not looking at 6,000 square foot lots. We're looking at more than likely probably third acre lots at the smallest. You know, some of the ones that centennial or quarter acre lots, some of them are third acre lots and some of them are half acre lots. But a winter park is all about third acre lots. A big corner lot might be a half acre, it might be a little more than a half acre. Thank you, Mr. Good. No, Floyd, we're, it's, it's back to the council. It's back to the council. Procedurally, let's get an ordinance out there, okay? Now, on our agenda, it doesn't say anything about overturning or upholding the planning commission's decision. Our agenda item says the ordinance to reads on property from A1 to R1. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're deciding tonight. That's why I was getting clarification so, and this is serious. So, Mr. Pinkerbinder can correct me. I would like to make a motion to approve the ordinance rezoning the property from A1 to R1. And then a yes vote would rezone it and no vote. Leave it as is. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, I got a question. And I make that motion. I got a question. Talking yes, to your mic. Huh? We need to talk into your mic. That's not what we're here for. According to the, if you read all in this, it says an appeal is what they planned. I don't know what the body of this says, but that's not what we should be doing. We should be voting on appeal to let them appeal what the uh, planning commission said or deny it. That's what's in, that's why I was reading this. They're supposed to be here for an appeal of the planning commission decision. And that's what we're doing. Not rezoning. We need to vote. It's the same on, difference either way. No, we need to either vote on to deny the appeal or to uphold the appeal. Well, Am I right? Well, <laughs> you may be correct. The item, of, the ordinance on the agenda. That's is what the I was to, to rezone. That's right. what I was telling you that it's not in the, the head of the ordinance, but it's in the paperwork. It says appeal. So you read. Well, I understand the stranger. ordinance I'm holding here says rezone from A1 to R1. Mr. Finkenbein. Okay. Mr. Finkenbein. That's how the ordinance reads. Is it right? But it's, it's really the same thing. I mean, when you boil it down to it, because the Planning Commission voted, it, the vote was unsuccessful to rezone. <clears throat> so the appeal is to decide whether, because only the city council can rezone property. So however you look at it, in, in one way it's six of one or half a dozen of the other. Um, your vote tonight, based on, I think there's a motion, hasn't been seconded that's yet, right. but the motion that's that's been made is to rezone the property as I understand it. I understand procedure. I'm just telling you what it's supposed to be. I've been on it 23 years, and they're here for an appeal, not the reason, not the zoning, because it's already been denied. So they're appealing Planning Commission's decision. Now we can vote the way you want. I'm just saying the way it's supposed to be. Oh yeah, it's not the way I want. I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm right and the lawyer's wrong? <laughs> Mr. Theo, you're always right. <laughs> Y'all hear this? <laughs> and we have a motion to approve uh, this rezoning. I do not have, I have a motion, but I do not have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this uh, rezoning from A1 to R1. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. The ordinance 02380. Ms. Webb? No. Okay. A yes vote no. changes it. A no vote doesn't. Please. Do you yes, that mean go with it? No means don't. And I'm so sorry because. Um, no. You're new. We, we've. <laughs> I know. And, and not if, the first if, name. If you want rezoning to occur, vote yes. If you okay. Want to leave it as is, vote no. No. Mr. Ledbetter? No. Mr. Hawkins? No. 
Ms. Isby? No. Ms. Mel? No. Ms. Tucker? No. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Grimes? No. Okay. That ordinance fails eight to zero. Thank you for asking that question, Cindy. I, I, I do appreciate that. Okay. No, thank you. Because people are watching. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. A lot of people. A lot of people are watching. <laughs> okay, unless y'all want to hang around for the rest of what we have tonight, you're more than welcome. Please go all the way out before you start talking. Yeah. And Excuse me, would y'all would y'all please exit the building if you're gonna visit, please? Chief, can I, Chief, can I get you to pull those doors, please? <laughs> 